Let me bring in MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell, host of The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell, who has been inside the courtroom. You've been there almost every day. You uh, have the strength of <laughs> beyond mortal men. But what was what was worth it to you today? What did you see? What did you hear? Well, you know, the courtroom is where I began as a writer and a reporter a long time ago. So this is a, a homecoming for me in terms of a, a workplace. Uh, the, the shocking thing at the end of that cross-examination, and I, I just can't tell you how, just how stunning it was, because it's the thing that I was waiting for. I saw everything Todd Blanche. I've seen every minute of cross-examination. I've seen every single question he's asked. And he sat down and, st and ended his cross-examination without asking a single question about the $130,000 that appears on the Allen Weisselberg notes about how they were structuring the payment to Michael Cohen. He asked about the $50,000 that's irrelevant to the $130,000, and that's where he very effectively got Michael Cohen to say, to agree that yes, he stole $30,000. Later, when Cohen was asked about that on redirect uh, by the prosecution, it didn't really sound like stealing $30,000. It sounded a lot like Michael Cohen doing the little that he could within that calculation to rebalance uh, the bonus he thought he deserved, and it still came out as less than the bonus he thought he deserved and the bonus he'd gotten the year before. But to go back to the $130,000, because that's what the case is about, that is the money that is considered an illegal campaign contribution by this prosecution. That is the crime. Michael Cohen pled guilty to in federal court an illegal campaign contribution, excessive contribution of $130,000. And the cross-examination of Michael Cohen did not touch that $130,000. And that is an amazing hole. That is a $130,000 hole uh, in that cross-examination that, 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 that Todd Blanche made absolutely no attempt to close, didn't go near it. As if, I mean, and understandably, what it tells you is they have no explanation, because that was the moment. If the defense was going to explain to you why Alan Weisselberg wrote in his own handwriting $130,000 on that document, which is the smoking gun document of the case, the defense had to explain it to you through this witness right now, and they didn't. And, and you know, as much as he had a, a good 10 minutes uh, on cross last week, getting uh, Michael Cohen confused about, is it possible that in that minute 30 phone call uh, to Keith Schiller that you talked about more than just Stormy Daniels, and Michael Cohen allowed that, okay, I guess it is possible that I talked about the phone call harassment and Stormy Daniels. Uh, that was a big achievement for, for uh, Todd Blanche on cross-examination. That achievement looked a lot smaller today when on uh, re redirect by the prosecution, they went over that again. And Michael Cohen allowed that, yes, of course, on these phone calls with Donald Trump, you could talk about more than one thing. But the big, the big shocking thing left out of this defense is absolutely zero explanation for the $130,000 entry on that piece of paper that calculates how much Michael Cohen will be paid, which the defense is insisting is not, not a payback. They're, in, they're trying to insist this was absolutely legal, represent, Michael Cohen's being paid as a lawyer for the year 2017, and this is how we're paying him, and there's no reimbursement in those paychecks at all, no reimbursement at all, and that just completely falls apart when the defense has nothing to say about the $130,000 that went into that calculation of what that reimbursement, the prosecution says, that those reimbursement checks would be. Lawrence, what about um, what the defense and the prosecution were arguing with Judge Mershon after the jury left uh, for the lunch break, the uh, des desire by the prosecution to enter into the record this C-SPAN video of Keith Schiller and Donald Trump together on the evening that Michael Cohen says uh, he spoke to Donald Trump about the Stormy Daniels matter just six minutes or so before Michael Cohen says he had that phone call? 
Yeah, that's such a great point uh, that this Todd Blanche is fighting against introducing this video and a still photograph from this video showing Keith Schiller and Donald Trump in that. Uh, and Katie, you know, the, the close proximity they were always in basically shoulder to shoulder all, all the time. They're leaving a campaign event at 7.57 p.m. At 8.02 p.m., Michael Cohen's testimony is he was he called Keith Schiller. Keith Schiller, after after speaking to Keith Schiller, Keith Schiller handed the phone to Donald Trump, and Donald Trump okayed the Stormy Daniels payment. And, <coughs> excuse me. And Todd Blanche is fighting the introduction of this photograph or this video uh, as powerfully as he has fought anything in this case. The judge has declared it to be relevant. He said, I think it's relevant. We'll consider the other possible objections to it after lunch. The judge is going to decide after lunch whether this, this video image gets into this case as an exhibit right now. And it'll go into this case as an exhibit right now if it does with Michael Cohen on the stand. And this will be a visual confirmation of the possibility, at least, of what Michael Cohen is saying is true, is that you could make a call to Keith Schiller in that situation, and he would hand the phone to Donald Trump. The, w when you see the way Todd Blanche is fighting this photograph uh, in court, fighting the introduction, letting the jury see it, uh, it's like he's fighting for the, the basic life well, of his defendant over this particular thing. That's how important it is. And what, what really struck me in the conversation they had the cyborg that conversation they had well, out of the, out of the sight of the jury, out of the ears, earshot of the jury, about this was that Blanche was saying it's hearsay, and the, the prosecution wants to have the custodian, the witness, the technical witness from C-SPAN say that it is a clip from the live C-SPAN feed, so it's legit. It happened, and he's, you know, Blanche is saying it's hearsay. And so Mershon's saying, well, you know, the relevance, and that it's not relevant. He's saying, I'm not concerned about the relevance, as you just pointed out. He'll look into the hearsay, you know, after the lunch break. And I'm not sure how that can be hearsay. If it actually happened, it's a clip from C-SPAN. It's, it's, uh, it's a highly technical, it's a very highly technical uh, hearsay. Uh, claim and it is it is technically correct and there's the question of whether there's enough foundation to overcome that hearsay objection. The hearsay, Andrea, is actually to the timestamp on the video. The timestamp is going to say 7:57 p.m. And what they mean by hearsay, what the defense means by hearsay, legitimately. Uh, in that situation is, how do we know that it's 7.57 p.m.? Who's telling us that? Uh, and and th there's not a witness here who's telling us it was 7.57 p.m. But what they have had, they've already had a C-SPAN witness come on and verify how C-SPAN timestamps everything. And what the prosecution is arguing is, look, the foundational testimony we got from C-SPAN official already explains exactly how that timestamp went on there. We can do all that again. We can drag that witness in here again, but we don't. There's no reason to do that. Uh, we we have enough foundation to accept the 7:57 uh, p.m. timestamp, and that and to, that gets them around. They believe uh, the hearsay objection. So, so the point would be that. This conversation could have taken place as Cohn describes it because there's enough time and they were together, but you can't infer what they actually said because there's no one there describing it. Keith Schiller's not a witness, and obviously Donald Trump isn't. That basically the point. Yeah, the photograph gives a to the jury. It, it gives the jury a a visual representation of how that phone call could work, and so it's. It's a crucial piece of evidence. It's, you know, it's not a tape of the phone call, but it's one of those things that is, it, it's several steps away from being a tape of a phone call, but it just adds a validity to Michael Cohen's claim about calling Keith Schiller and Keith Schiller passes the phone to Donald Trump. And, and if you watch the way Todd Blanche is fighting it, this is like it's the last fight of this case, that he has, he has got to win this one. Uh, that's the way he believes it at this point on keeping this photograph away from the jury. He doesn't want the jury to see this photograph. And we'll find out most likely at 2.15 when they come back for lunch. Lawrence O'Donnell, thank you so much. Your, your legal eye in all of these aspects is just great, and we'll hear more 
on Lawrence's analysis from the trial today. So tune in to The Last Word tonight at 10, 10 p.m. on MSNBC.